this um, small painting by um, the English artist Walter Sickert is called The Back of the Assembly Rooms and it's a, it's a bath subject and it was painted about 1917. Sickert has got very close connections with our city actually because um, he, he spent much of the First World War here renting various lodging houses, rooms in various lodging houses to get away from the Zeppelin raids in London. And then he returned in later life in 1938 and actually took up residence in the city and spent the last four years of his life here. But what he particularly loved about Bath, um, he, he, he loved the sort of, the sense of faded glory that Bath had um, when he first came here in 1917, that, that, that the old buildings with ivy growing up them, Bath had passed its heyday as a fashionable sort of um, resort, somewhere to take the waters. Uh, and it was starting to look a little bit seedy, a little bit tired. And it's exactly the sort of thing he reveled in. I mean, he'd, been, he'd made a name for himself painting um, pictures of din dingy lodging house interiors and subjects like that. And, uh, and he, he was the most continental of British artists because uh, uh, his father was German and, uh, and he had uh, consorted with uh, the likes of Edgar Degas and Claude Monet in, uh, and held you know, on equal terms. He never parted with his pictures for much money. He, he thought it was, although you know, he was in demand, he wanted his pictures to be as widely distributed as possible uh, and uh, ordinary people to be able to afford them. So, um, and of course, when he was hard up, he would sometimes leave pictures um, with lodging house owners in lieu of rent. And that's what happened on one of his visits to Bath. Um, he, he couldn't pay the rent, said to the landlady, look, here's a few drawings, here's some paintings. Um, I'll, I'll pay you when I can, but these are yours un, um, until that moment. On one of these occasions, the, um, there was a small girl who used to go and play the piano for this um, landlady, because the girl herself didn't have a piano, but the lady did. And, um, and um, at following Sickert's visit and uh, not paying the rent, the landlady, not being able to understand the paintings or appreciate them, thought, oh, that's a load of rubbish. I'm chucking them in the bin. And this young girl actually witnessed this act of destruction and said, don't throw them in the bin, give them to me. And um, so, um, so that's what happened. So four or five works by Sicker entered her, this um, teenage girl's collection. And she kept most of them her life apart from back of the assembly rooms. And it came into the gallery's possession because um, this was in the late 1990s. So we're going back a couple of decades. She spoke to me on the phone. She was in a retirement home and said, I've got a Walter Sickert painting. I'd like to give it to you. And part, I didn't say to her, but part of me thought, you know, pull the other leg, you know, but another half of me thought, well, we better check this out. So I asked a colleague to go and visit this lady in the retirement home, um, which she duly did. And, you know, uh, and she, she shared this, a full story with my colleague and came back with this little painting in a Waitrose carrier bag. It's a strange view to take because he's deliberately avoided the glory shot. You know, the glory shot is the front of the building with the pillars and columns and so on. He's looking down the kind of back overhang and uh, looking towards Lansdowne Hill. The building's covered in ivy on Lansdowne Hill. Uh, so it, it's, it's, it's not an obvious view. And that's very typical of Sickert because he always tried to, uh, I think, uh, take a different perspective uh, and not look for the obvious. Uh, because the Sunday painters can do the obvious. He's not a Sunday painter. So, and actually I've gone up there. If you go up there and look at the same view, take a photograph of it. One of the things that I find was that you have to put a telephoto lens on your camera. An ordinary lens will not replicate the same view. So, and actually he does that in a lot of his paintings. He, he actually, his field of view is actually, you know, is very narrow. It might be, I don't know, in 19 or 20 degrees or, or might be less than that. And I think that's because he had such acute vision. What I, one of the things I love about the painting that's really charming is that I think he's, 
broken a lot of his own rules for how he made art. Because uh, uh, when he was a young man, um, Whistler said to him, he took him on Battersea Bridge, and he did this with other pupils as well, and he would instruct them, said, okay, look at that subject for five minutes, study it, you know, it, and it, you know, evening might be falling, uh, details disappearing, and then he'd say to them, okay, have you looked enough? Now turn around and paint what you so just looked at, but you're not allowed to look back again. And that was about training the memory. And um, so, so Sickert developed his own method. I mean, he had a huge falling out with the, whist with the Whistler as a young man because he, he, he didn't acknowledge him in one of his pictures exhibited at the Royal Academy. You were meant to say, Walter Sickert, pupil of James Whistler. Didn't, did, didn't give him that acknowledgement. Whistler just trashed him, you know, refused to see it, speak to him again. But uh, the, the method that Sick, Sickert applied in his own work was it's all about capturing the things that aren't obvious, that wouldn't normally give you scope for making an artwork from. So something glimpsed in a music hall, uh, something glimpsed um, at breakfast in the kitchen, and he would, he would make a scribble in his notebook or on the back of an envelope very spontaneously, and maybe in the semi-darkness without even looking at the paper. But that quickly snatched um, note became the basis of everything else because he would then, the, his studio process was then to make a larger drawing from the note and then square the drawing up and then transfer the composition of the drawing onto a painting, which is, runs completely contrary to normal impressionist practice where you work outdoors. But in this painting, he's just torn up his own rule book and thought, I like that view. There's a picture there, you know, got his board out and painted it um, with no preliminaries. It's just snatched, you know, very, very quickly, very spontaneously but it's an absolute little jewel of a painting. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to like or add a comment. I look forward to seeing you next time.